What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport podcast. I'm here with two-time world champion Earl Kunkel. Earl, how are you doing? Awesome. How's everything been? It's moving. I'm getting thin. <laughs> I'm, I'm wasting away. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to catch you and get thin, too. I don't, I don't know if it goes well with your brand. What if I was like 220, though, and had a six-pack? Would you have a six-pack at 220? I would have a four pack with a lot of extra skin. That's where I'm at. I think right now, I don't want to. I'm too nervous to show it because, like, if I but if I did some abs real quick, I might even. I don't think I'd have the six, but I'm at the four with like with a little bit of a pump. Yeah, an I pump. think I may have the four just normal. I'm not gonna try it. Maybe off camera. I'm a baby <laughs> about it. What What are we talking about today? Do you know? I know. Do I have to remind you again? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're talking about best explosive core exercises. So we are talking about abs. Somehow, oh, somehow we were talking about yeah. abs, and you're like, oh, we're talking about Wait, abs. What are for? we doing? Where am I? Yeah, man. Best explosive core exercises. All right. Before we get into it a little bit, does my almost six pack abs at my like wasting away weight actually, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I mean, I, I, I Okay, well, first of all, let's just be clear that the only reason that you have abs right now, you know, not to discount the work you've done in the past, so let's rephrase that. Yeah. You like, have abs because you've snatched 120 kilos five dozen times, right? You, yeah. You've front squatted a lot of weight. You've push pressed a lot of weight. You've back squat a lot yes. of weight. You've done all of this work, which has created just this, I always think about it. Um, like back in the day, uh, when we would play like Halo or something, when Xbox first came out, there was like, there was characters that like, they would be standing there and if they got specific armor, it would be like, and you'd show the armor, like getting yeah. put on them. And I think about that with like weightlifting and okay. with, with like strength and conditioning yep. and strength training is that like you go six months, you get, you get a layer of, of just like thickness on your trunk. You go twelve months, you get another layer, and and, and it just packs on, which is why you'll see you like go for like five, six years. Yeah, you and like you'll, a lot of layers. <laughs> yeah, you get you know football players, offensive linemen, or not necessarily offensive linemen, but even throwers. Um, a lot of field hockey girls too, and field hockey dudes too, where they'll just be like almost have like a little bit of a gut, but it's like straight muscle because of how much rotation they're doing and all the right, work right. they put in. So I think for you to answer that initial question, is it? Is it doing anything? I think it's showing up because you're getting leaner. Right. And so it's more prevalent. It's We're more aware of it. And you still likely have the same neural drive, at least probably like 80 to 85% of when you were at your, your peak. When I was at my peak, I could get six pack abs, 12 pounds heavier. Okay. So you're, you're so you're a little, you were a little bit leaner body fat or you had more muscle mass. Yeah. You had more muscle mass, which is also makes sense based off what your training was for the last year. Right. Like I was snatching, clean and jerk and squatting five days a week. Yeah. And so, so to me compared to now I'm cleaning and squatting Okay, and then doing like ab accessory stuff. But I think, you know, to answer that initial question, I think it is for, for like the gen pop, I think it's important to have abs, to train abs, to train your trunk, um, because you're going to be more stable and just doing everyday movements. And mm -hmm. if you think about like, you know, I think about my grandparents or I even think about my parents growing up, like the only ab stuff my dad would do, my trunk, the trunk work my dad would do would be like wrestling, which is really, really good. Yeah. But he would never do like specific trunk work to improve any imbalances he would have. And I remember a couple times a year, like maybe once or twice a year, he might like throw his back out randomly and like <laughs> three or four days out of the week, he could the barely back. walk. Yeah. And I think that that's stuff that our generation is more aware of. And it comes back to that question. So it does, it does factor into like, it is productive to have abs. Yeah. All right, good. I'm going to keep them. Yeah. To have lean abs. They're not going anywhere. I'll, um. So I want to say you like hear explosive and core, right? Like your trunk. Yeah. And when I hear explosive in the trunk, the first thing I think of is more rotational. Yeah. I think of someone throwing a punch, someone hitting a baseball. Mm -hmm. Like that's where your mind tends to go. Or even engaging in a block, you know, yeah. like that first point of contact, becoming rigid and not like just getting your back bent over and you, you gumby and crumble, if you will. Um, 
So when you train your core in the weight room with that, Norm, Gen Pac, if you will, right, looks at it as the six-pack ab, yeah. like what we were talking about. Like, that's the goal. Yeah. Now, when we get to sports performance, I feel like the six-pack ab ends up being a symptom or a result, but it's not the goal. Yeah. Can you, like, elaborate on that idea of, like, abs as maybe not just sports performance, but also, like, health, longevity, career? So, yeah, that's where I would say, I mean, one – yeah, you know, we sort of touched on this. Your abs are popping now because you're leaner. You know, you, you're losing you're losing fat mass. So now the the that sheath of muscles starting to arise. So you're getting leaner. Uh, you have like that. That's positive, and that's like another big thing in sports performance is that typically you'll see. You know, look at an MMA guy. Like look at a fighter. Uh, look at like the quintessential pictures of like uh, Floyd Mayweather or Muhammad Ali with a six pack. Uh, after they knock somebody out, now Floyd Mayweather wasn't really a knockout guy, but Muhammad Ali, and and if you think about what that was, you know when they would see that when you see the six pack, that's from that lean that lean uh, body mass or lean, yeah lean body mass where the fat mass is a lot lower. So it it's that individual. So if you see it with athletes, the individuals are going to be. Um, more efficient machines because they have less fat mass. Fat mass doesn't really do anything for you while you're doing an act, an action. Um, Keeps you warm when it's cold out, though. That's fair. It does. <laughs> now, I think, w w like what you were talking about, the rotational side. I also think like you could bring wrestling in where you might have a little more, you know, or more head-on work, but you are also going to have that rotational stuff um, as far as your abs are concerned. I think. It's it's interesting you said that because I was I had Jason send me this jump cut that Saquon Barkley hit this weekend because I was breaking down what he does to set up his like basically his penultimate his last second last right. step into his big huge cut when he's running at full speed and you can sort of see him change his trunk degree and then his hips rise and then he puts his foot out even further to slam on the brakes and he collapses a little bit like, and I, I think this is actually purposeful. He might not be aware he's doing it, but he's doing it because he's such a freak. He collapses to his left, which is the side that he was decelerating on. And then that's how he like comes out. It's like he absorbs that energy. Uh, yeah, I was going like to say, a, it it's sounds like, like he almost like springs it back. Like you pull it, you almost pull the, not a rubber band, but if you ever had like a, a spoon, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Pull yes, the spoon back yes, to like shoot something off. Yes, and he just uses that brake leg. That one's that's not the penultimate step though, right? There's well, a step be like before this, he yeah, breaks. Yeah, be the step before that. Yeah. So penultimate that's the step break, where you get a little higher. Yeah. Spoon, yeah. spoon. It, load the spring. Turn and go. Yeah. Now, now the, you're saying that's happening. That that is through a, the ab. Yeah, that's all a result of his. His setup, because you can see he's so aware of how to control his trunk. And this is where the explosive stuff comes into play. And as a symptom, you know, Saquon has, you know, cleaned, what, 420. He's back squatted close to 600 pounds. Miles Sanders back squatted 600 pounds. These these guys, I know their numbers specifically. I've seen the, the record board at Penn State. So these guys have done a lot of trunk work, isolation-wise and you know, compound wise to lead to that, that ability. And the symptom is the, the symptom is they're leaner. The symptom is also, they, yeah, these are people who have six pack abs. Yeah. They're literally Walking around at like two thirty, yeah, two twenty. Yeah. Like they're probably all 10% body fat or lower. Uh, I would say probably 10% body fat would be fair for both of them, which, you know, contrary to what people believe that's really, really low. You know, if you have a six pack, you're you're probably around ten percent. People who say that they have like six percent body fat, they're full of it. Like you, there's no way, unless you're like a world class bodybuilder um, and on drugs. So someone like Saquon <laughs> is is hitting this cut, um, and and that trunk, that stress that goes into his body is essentially he's trained it, he's developed it, he's coordinated it, and that symptom then does become the six pack abs and the, the, the fact that he doesn't have that, that fat mass that could lead to slowing him down or in, in, or hindering his cut 
is is part of that whole equation. All right. So since we're talking about explosive core exercises, like the goal, we have a big setup now of like what a big payoff can be with it. So like we have this incredible athlete who has six pack abs, but can do these incredible things on the field, you know, Mm -hmm. out there playing, make these cuts. And we talk about the core, Mm -hmm. right? You talk about that. And I know you love to call it the trunk. You love the trunk because it's more inclusive of like the lower back, the hips, the abs, the obliques, the side, everything with it. You you see it more in tandem. Like it's not isolated. When I use the word trunk, I think of an oak tree. Like, All right. I think of like a big ass pin oak, totally wrapped up, ready to roll, and just super super sturdy. And that's that's what I want. I want I want that that's silent. You know, and all the limbs, all the leaves, and all the branches that are flailing everywhere. Yeah, the trunk is the silencer. It's stabilizing the whole thing so that your arms and your legs and your limbs can move about from the wind, from whatever you're doing. Meanwhile, that trunk is is what's it's what's preventing the perturbations uh, from getting into your hips, which could then potentially leave you okay. off kilter. So we got this pin oak, you said? Yeah. Right. We want to train I like it. white we, oaks, too. We want the the dynamic trunk control is like the g- garage yes. strength like yeah. thing. Yeah. What are you doing with it exercise-wise from a flexive standpoint with your hydro weight and isometric and compound technical coordination movements as well? So I would say to actually develop that i would say there's a couple big factors is one you know i like using things like a a behind the neck jerk and pausing in the split because that's going to force your legs uh your legs and your hips to connect with the trunk when you're in an overhead position and the further i can get that weight away from my feet you know the the harder it's going to be to stabilize the trunk right Uh, and if you can do that at a really high speed it makes it even harder so that's like one way that we like to train it that's simple that's a little bit simpler without isolating it's just you know it's a compound movement it's still aggressive though it's still pretty fast a clean receiving a clean is is another big factor a lot of coaches and this is a little kick I'm on right now is a lot of coaches will say don't rack your cleans you don't need to rack your cleans if if you're uh you know people say this like legitimately but the funny part is is that if you put if you put somebody on on um, the force plates, cleaning it? well, they'll just do like a high pull or a clean high a snatch wow. high pull. But if you put somebody on force plates and you measure the force output, the highest point of vertical force is when you're receiving the bar. It it'll be like two and a half times the load of the bar when you receive it. So if vertical force is highest when I'm receiving the bar. Why would I not want to train that? Right. If I can train, you know, Saquon Barkley, we just talked about. It's like playing touch football. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. (laughs) He cleaned 420 in college. So if if he's catching it two and a half times the weight of 420, guess what? Now he's at what? A thousand pounds on the absorption? Now, when he gets into a game, he can use that when he's cutting. That's a half ton coming down on you. (laughs) Exactly. And and, and it's your trunk, your abs, your back is what factors in. That's that's, that's where that spring loaded, the the spoon that we're talking about. Now you know how to use it, and when you get compressed slightly, you know how to come out of it. Now think about that compression that he has on that on that clean, and compare it to when he's elevating his hips, putting his plant leg out fo- forward, collapsing slightly so he can spring out of that cut even better and have a better jump cut. So, you know, I would say behind the neck jerk. Then we go to the, we go to cleans. We go to, if 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 it's a little bit, you know, you have a beginner athlete, you can do a goblet squat, a front squat, a back squat, and you can do contrast methods with uh something like an ab wheel or a V up or something simple where they can Why the contrast methods with like the isolation movements there, like that target specifically the abs. What's the goal with that? If I have an athlete that's not as talented uh, or athletically gifted based off of tests and assessments in in the eye test then we're going to be able to see, okay, this person struggles at coordinating their abs. They're slow out of cuts. They can't hit a big jump cut. They can't hit a, a simple 45 degree cut. Uh, they can't land on one leg without hopping. Well, now to me, that's going to tell me there's a leak in their abs that gives them out of position. They're they're When, when the wind's blowing their trunk, their trunk's flailing all over the place. They, they look more like a I'm trying to think of what we could compare it to. Get like, out of the breeze. Yeah, right? yeah. We and, don't and, need no palm trees out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a good a good one. Um, that's probably the easiest way to to sort of convey that same analogy. And 
now, uh, if we can isolate it and train it, then they're more aware of it when they go back to that front squat and they start to feel the compound movement. They'll start to feel that isolation fatigue when they're doing um, when they're doing the compound movement. So then it transfers a little bit better. And then you want to take that mind muscle connection and transfer that into All right. a plyometric. Give movement. me like two reflexive strength movements that. Or go to for abs and preferably with the hydro weight. Okay, so everyone right now, should have a hydro weight. I would go with the Euro step where we go Euro step, Euro, like step, step, hold, hip lock. Okay, okay. With the hydro weight. That would be the first one. And we've we've done videos on this. You know, you can see this online, but it's basically taking a Euro step in, in basketball and mimicking this in the weight room. Another one that I'm doing right now that I really, really like is I'm holding like a Zercher position with the hydro weight yeah. here. Okay, I do a single leg RDL in a Zercher position with the hydro weight. So my back leg goes, my one leg goes back, my other leg's planted. And then I come up to a hip lock and I want to squeeze my quad into my elbow. Okay. So if I squeeze my quad into my elbow, I'm going to hold that. And then that forces a little bit more action from this this compression into my quad. Right, That the spoon getting bent type and of thing to the side a little bit. That's where, so I, I saw the video and I pester jason to copy it and send it to me and the reason why was because that exercise to me is a really really good like premeditated movement that can teach someone how to get out of that cut the way he does I, it's unlikely there's probably like 10 people in the world that can hit that cut right you know this is a guy who can squat 600 pounds and run a four three but still if you have an exercise that can develop that skill and raise someone's floor. Yes, yeah, exactly. Maybe their ceiling is nowhere near. And and this his. is the, this is the whole point here is that right now, and I've been wanting to talk to you about this specifically is that we're playing around with we had these nine levels, but now we're sort of changing some of our assessment and we're calling it the the normal people, the normal person player. Okay, so we're taking the idea of VORP and it's called the normal person player. Okay, <laughs> so value over replacement player is getting replaced with normal person player. It's going to be a score. But if, if we can think about normal person player is Johnny Neman, John, John, Johnny Keanu normal, Reeves. <laughs> yeah, Keanu, Keanu Reeves in seventh grade yeah. would be the normal person player or whoever his counterpart, whatever the female is that comes in. The, the most normal person in seventh grade, the most normal person in 10th grade, the most normal person in 12th grade. Our training system is built off of NPPs. And if we can teach NPPs, to learn the reflexive movement, like what we just mentioned, yeah, and we can get them stronger in the weight room. Our NPP here at Garage Strength will be higher than your NPP wherever you're training, right. and our people are going to win. Yeah, and probably end up being elite at to Something. some degree yeah. in some way. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, we already talked about how abs look. We didn't mention the triple C thick abs. That's that's old news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how it transfers to sport. Let's go to the audience questions, all okay, right? Yeah. YouTube community, Don Ricci. Oh, no Ricky. way. Yeah. Wait, really? D R I C C I or I? Uh, yeah. Did I say the name right? Don Ricci. Don Ricci. Yeah. He's a coach, I know. My friend has very He's poop, out of Charlottesville now. Poop lockout. He says he's strong. He's asking this question for B, me. He has. <laughs> All right. Let me ask read it, it again. It, it, My yeah. friend has very shit lockout. He says he's strong. <laughs> B, he has shit lockout. So I don't count his reps ever. Oh, my God. How do you God. fix shit lockout? Yo, that is hilarious. Did you just get trolled? I just, yo, not only did I get trolled, we all got trolled because Don made it through to the community questions. So this is a guy, and he, dude, he's had a couple weightlifters that have snatched like 160 plus. Oh, wow. Um, and he's he's sort of like out of it now. He's just working. Uh, he moved, fr he was in uh, California and he moved to Virginia. His wife's from Virginia ar around the area. And now he, he found a job at, uh, I think at UVA or Charlottesville, somewhere in the area. Okay. Um, and so he'll just he's an academic maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> but here and there he actually was on the he actually was on the water polo team where they like one of the guys got caught like the the main dude who was like he they won like three national How do championships you cheat at water polo do you have like they were faking on they were faking admissions oh and he knew the guy who basically had faked everything um anyway going back to this <laughs> going back to don is like 
he'll he'll see the YouTube channel and he'll just send me like screenshots and be like, dude, this is so cool. Like, I'm so happy for you, but you still have a lockout like a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so, Don, you- to answer your question, if somebody does have a bad lockout, I would say you've always got to find if it's in that mid range, training the triceps and doing things like pad bench, doing a lot of hypertrophy work, doing a lot of miracle grows. And dips. I would say dips, Miracle Grows, Pad Bench are the best ways to improve Sweet. lockout. Discord. This is from I can't SSD. wait to text him and tell him to go What's himself. your guys' thoughts on squat tober? I'm a basketball player, but lift to get stronger faster since I'm a little undersized, but my squat is kind of lacking and want to really grind it out. I think it's fine. I think it. I always do it for the memes. Yeah, do it for the memes. Do it for Instagram. Uh, but honestly, like I, I've always liked a time a year when – We'll either squat first in, in certain programs um, or we'll squat every single day that people come in. And I, I like to share this this uh, story where um, Cameron Stewart, who's a D-end at Rutgers, um, and one of our other linebackers who's a linebacker at uh, uh, Villanova, they were both uh, J.R. Strauss. They were both struggling with their squats because they're both taller. You know, Cameron's like 6'6", six, six and... JR was like six. So you made them hammer it. I made them squat every single day. Every single day they came in, and by like the third week, they were like, "Yo, this is awesome!" Like they wanted to be different from everybody else, and they were, you know, squatting heavy, squatting heavy. And at the end, they were each hitting like one ninety for like sets of four, ass to grass. It's like, go you know, those kids. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I think things like squat tober stuff like that. That's good. Have fun. All yeah. right. That's dynamic. Train your core explosively, exercises explosively. as possible. And squat every day. Impulse power. Until next time. Hydro weight. Peace.